Well, hello, Hood Church family. How are you all doing today? Trust this week is going really well for you. Well, it's Stay at Home Wednesday, and I'm in our condo kitchen. As you can see, there's some work being done behind me. My wife has been busy in the kitchen today preparing uh, some wonderful soups, ham and potato soup, and now bean and ham and bean soup. So you can kind of guess what we had for Easter Sunday, ham and potatoes, and boy, it was really dish delicious. So I'm here in our kitchen, and I'm whipping up a tasty Bible study. In honor of Good Friday, we watched, I watched The Passion, we both watched The Passion of the Christ. Powerful film. I mean, the suffering of Jesus on the cross is so moving. And those three crosses, friends, remind us that one cross shows a thief dying in sin, and the other cross shows a thief dying to sin, and on the center cross is our Redeemer dying for sin. And those three crosses divide all mankind into one of two categories. Either those who reject Christ and die in sin, or those who receive Christ and die to sin. And I'm so thankful. I thank God the cross is empty, and, and so is the tomb. It's been empty for these 2,000 years. And what does that mean for us? Well, let's look at those two things, the, the empty cross and the empty tomb. And let's, let's Let's first think about the, the uh, empty cross. And, and there are three things that, that we can learn from that, friends. Number one, our salvation has been bought and paid for. Our salvation has been bought and paid for. That's number one. On the cross, the bad news was turned into good news. The bad news of the gospel message, friends, that's the first part of the, of the gospel message, and very bad news. Everyone who's ever lived is born in sin. Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What's worse is the wages of sin is death. Paul tells us in Romans 6, 23, we've all worked for sin and earned death. We deserve death. That's really bad news. But the second part of the gospel, friends, is glorious good news. What we couldn't do, Jesus did. Romans 5, 8, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that wonderful, friends? In our sin and our shame, in our rebellion, Christ died for us. And all we have to do is confess, confess with our mouth and believe. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe in are justified and it is with your mouth friends that you confess and are saved in fact the verse 13 just a couple verses later is just a really powerful passage everyone friends who calls on the name of the lord will be saved what a promise friends you can take that to the bank see every one of us are sinners there's nothing we could ever do that could ever change our sinful and hopeless situation, going to church, paying tithe, living a good life, that's not enough. Reading the Bible, being kind to the poor, giving your money to missions, that would never be enough. Why? God expects perfection. We can never do it, but we don't have to. We don't have to reach that. Jesus has already done it. When he died upon the cross, he declared it is finished. His death paid the price and the penalty for sin in full. And so our salvation has been bought and paid for. The empty cross shows us that. And that number two, we are set free from the curse and bondage of sin. Now, remember the guilt and the hopelessness of your life before you met Jesus Christ. The guilt, the shame, the humiliation was overwhelming. The burden, the weight that you carried was more than, more than you could ever bear, friends. And we are set free from the curse and bondage of sin. And now we can enjoy glorious freedom in Jesus Christ. The past is gone. You don't, it's not going to drag you down anymore. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Second Corinthians 5, 17, Paul writes that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. She is a new creation. Behold, the old is gone. The new has come. Everything has been changed. We are set free from the curse and bondage of sin. And the third thing from the, that we learn from the empty cross is that we have complete access in the throne room of God. 
See, before we were separated from the Father, both by our sinfulness, our great sinfulness, and both by his great holiness. And those two were never going to meet. But they did meet in the person of Jesus Christ when he died upon that cross. And now we have complete and immediate access into God's presence. When Jesus died, the curtain in the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. We don't need another mediator. We don't need another priest. Jesus is our mediator. He is our priest. We can enjoy his presence anytime, all the time. Isn't that glorious news, friends? Well, that's all because of the empty cross. Well, let's now visit the empty tomb. And what an incredible time that must have been for the women as they went to the tomb on Easter Sunday morning. How thrilling it would have been for them to find the tomb was empty. The angel was there saying, Behold, he is not here, he is risen. Well, that also proves three things for us, the empty tomb. Number one, Jesus' atoning work was effective and it was complete for us, for you and for me. The penalty was paid. That's what the empty cross proved, Christ's resurrection. Your sin is forgiven. My sin is forgiven. It's been washed away. We have been born again. We're brand new in Christ. Not only that, number two, we can now have hope and assurance for all eternity. Not just, not just his work was effective and complete, but we have hope and assurance for all eternity. Now, hope is such a wonderful word. You know, I, I have to admit, I didn't understand it until... I met a man at the very first church that I pastored. And when I met him, it was not long after his life had been completely ruined by alcohol, his career, his family, devastated by a life of alcohol. And, and uh, he had come to know Christ as his Savior. And we met, and it was wonderful to see him grow in the Lord. And he would say to me, being a Christian, Christianity gives hope. Now, I didn't come from a background like his, so I didn't really understand what he had gone through. But as I talked with him, I began to see how beautiful that word is, hope. Friends, we have a marvelous hope in Jesus Christ. Now, it's not a wish. Oh, I wish this could happen. It's not a yearning. It's not a longing. It's a certainty. It's a confidence, friends. Jesus not only paid the way to heaven, he paved the the way to heaven. See, he's gone before us. See, if, you, if you're going to go someplace you've never been before, you want an experienced guy. You want to make sure you're going with somebody who knows where they're going. Well, there's only one person who died, rose again, and is still alive for the last 2,000 years. He's still alive. And he made us a promise, friends, because I live, you shall live also. Because he lives, friends, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives. We can now have hope and assurance for all eternity. Well, there's a third wonderful truth because of the empty tomb, and that is we can have resurrection power for living today. Resurrection power for living today. See, it's not just about the future. It's not just about heaven. It's not about just about someday. The empty tomb has an impact upon our lives today. Paul tells us, Romans 8, 11, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body, your physical body. He's going to make that alive. The Holy Spirit is going to bring you resurrection power. When you die, that grave's not going to hold you. You're going to go. But the one who promises physical resurrection also provides spiritual resurrection. And we don't have to live in defeat, friends. We don't have to live in discouragement. We can live in victory. We are overcomers. We're more than conquerors through Christ who loves us so. All of that, friends, because of the empty cross and the empty tomb. It is glorious, friends. It is glorious. Now, I read something just the other day, and I want to share that with you. The Queen of England gave her first ever Easter speech. And the message was, take heart in the hope of the risen Christ. Now, Queen Elizabeth first ascended to the throne in 1952. That's before many of us were even alive. She is the longest serving female head of state in world history. And she's gonna turn 94 next week on April 21st. Happy almost birthday, Queen Elizabeth. Listen to what she said. This year, Easter will be different for many of us. Yet, she added, Easter is not canceled. It is needed as much as ever before. 
the discovery of the risen Christ on the first Easter day gave his followers new hope and fresh purpose. And we can all take heart from this. We know that coronavirus will not overcome us, she said. Wow, she sounds like a preacher, friends, and not the Queen of England. She went on to say, as dark as death can be, particularly for those suffering with grief, light and life are greater. May the living flame of the Easter hope be a steady guide as we face the future. Wow, those are wonderful words. Friends, please let me know how you're doing. Leave a comment on our website, HonoluluAG.org, our Facebook page, search for Honolulu AG, or our YouTube channel, and search for Honolulu Assembly of God. Please bookmark those sites and get there easy. Join our Facebook group, The Prayer and Praise Wall. You can post prayer requests and praise reports there. Please share our website, our Facebook, our YouTube resources with others so they can be blessed and encouraged too. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for resurrection, joy and resurrection power that the cross is empty and the tomb is empty. I give you praise for that, Lord. I rejoice in you. I thank you that your power is available to make a difference in our life, not only today, but for throughout eternity. And we give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you, friends. Love you. Aloha kekua. Bye-bye.